A U.S. amphibious assault ship has arrived at a naval base in Busan to join the large-scale amphibious landing exercises with South Korean troops. The United States and South Korean navies and all the Marine Corps kicked off their first large-scale amphibious landing exercises in five years on the 20th of March for a two-week run until the 3rd of April. The two countries also began about 11 days of joint drills that have been dubbed as Freedom Shield 23. On the 13th of March, along with air and sea drills involving American B-1B bombers. These activities are being held on a scale that have not been witnessed since 2017 to counter North Korea's growing threats. But North Korea insists that these military drills by the Americans are essentially just a rehearsal for a ground invasion of North Korea. And Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has defended his decision to allow the United States to increase its military presence in the country. He's argued that it was vital for territorial defense, despite China's fierce opposition, and has denied claims that it would drag the Philippines into an abyss of geopolitical strife. In February, the Philippine government had allowed for rotating batches of American forces to indefinitely stay in four more Philippine military camps. And this is in addition to five local bases that were earlier designated under a 2014 defence pact of the long-time treaty allies. The first train routes have resumed in Greece for the first time since February. The interim governor of the Hellenic Railways Organization has said that the full operation of the lines will resume gradually over five weeks. The new measures such as slower speeds and also more staff at stations will be implemented. And all rail passenger and freight routes have been halted since a passenger train carrying 350 people collided head-on with a freight train. This of course was the deadliest train disaster in Greece's history and has sparked public outrage over poor safety conditions at the problematic Greek railway system. But in France, protesters against the government's pension reforms blocked a train station in Nice. And this comes as President Emmanuel Macron gave a televised interview hoping to calm down the tensions. Protesters in the southern French city laid a mascot of Macron on the railway tracks to block the train traffic while chanting slogans and also holding banners. Protests continued in Paris and elsewhere in France for the sixth straight night. And garbage bins and barricades of were set on fire as the people demanded that the French president must go back on the judicial on the pension changes that he has made. A report submitted to the United Nations Human Rights Council has said that systemic, widespread and gross human rights violations have and are being committed in Belarus. It also says that at least about five people have died unlawfully. A sweeping crackdown and dissent was unleashed by the Belarusian authorities in 2020 after mass protests followed President Alexander Lukashenko's new term in office. The report, based on 207 interviews that were conducted in 2022 with victims and witnesses, claims that more than 35,000 people were arrested and that thousands were in fact beaten by the police in the largest ever protest that had been held in a country. And Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has stated that a Russian missile strike on the residential buildings in southeast Ukrainian city has killed one civilian and has also injured 33 others, including two children. Videos showed two damaged buildings with firefighters and ambulances nearby, and regional military administration has claimed that the two missiles hit the buildings. Russia launched a swarm of drones into Ukraine overnight, killing at least about four people near Kiev in a display of force as China's President Xi Jinping left for Moscow. And South Korean media has 
claimed that North Korea has fired several cruise missiles off its east coast on Wednesday, with South Korea and the United States holding joint military drills and also a U.S. assault ship arriving in South Korea. Tensions have been on the rise in the Korean peninsula. It is unclear as to how many missiles Pyongyang fired, but it is alleged by Seoul's media that it could have been not long-range strategic cruise missiles that were in fact tested as the latest provocation. The Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met with Polish President Andrzej Duda during a visit to Warsaw. They held talks on bilateral relations and the security situation in the region. The backdrop of the Ukraine war was also on the agenda. In the meeting of the Polish capital came a day after Fumio Kishida, of course, made a surprise visit to Kiev where he met with the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. And highlighting the importance of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's visit to Ukraine, Japanese spokesperson said that the visit was fruitful as the Japanese Prime Minister was able to observe firsthand the damage caused by the Russian invasion. And this will pave the way for Japan's future support for Ukraine and as the president of the group of seven nations in taking the leadership for G7 to respond to the Ukrainian situation. And at least about one person has been killed in a building collapse in Khatar's capital, Doha. Rescue efforts are presently underway as searchers are digging through rubble. Khatar's interior ministry has described the building as a four-story structure in Doha's Bin Durham neighborhood. No immediate reason for the collapse has been given by the authorities. The Kuwait oil company has said that it has limited the scope of an oil leak in the west of the country and that it is making maximum efforts to fully control it. This comes after the Kuwaiti oil company had declared a state of emergency following an oil spill. And earlier, a company spokesperson had said that teams had in fact been dispatched to determine the source of the leak and to contain the incident. The protests continue in the state of Israel over the highly controversial judicial reform bill. Hundreds of Israeli women called, calling themselves the grandmothers for democracy joined demonstrations. The political crisis has divided the country and has extended to the military, causing many to not in fact show up for their mandatory military service. Netanyahu's allies claim that the courts have way too much power in the legislative process and that the Supreme Court is biased against the settlers. And amidst preparations for the month of Ramadan, which is here, people in Bangladesh, it is being reported, are struggling due to the impact of high inflation, as are people around the world. Now, the food prices have, in fact, gone through the roof. And at this moment, long queues were witnessed at trucks selling government-subsidized commodities, such as rice and flour. Local market vendors are also seeing fewer customers with grain vendors complaining of high costs. And Sri Lanka has received the first portion of the IMF bailout. And this amounts to nearly about $330 million out of the planned $3 billion bailout that's been approved by the International Monetary Fund. Now, analysts believe that this will lead to other banks, such as the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, and other lenders also considering lending support for the country. And the Thai police were locked in a bit of a standoff with an armed civilian after he had shot dead at least about two people and injured a third as he fired from inside of his house. The Thai television showed a dozen heavily armed police officers carrying protective shields and weapons. The reports claim that authorities were cordoned off from the residential area in a place called the Pet Chaburi province, just two hours west of Bangkok. 
The local police superintendent was noted as saying that the suspect was a 29-year-old man who appeared to be stressed because he was due to appear in court or a dispute with his neighbour. Further investigations are presently underway. Now, the European Commission has in fact proposed requiring companies in Europe to back up climate-friendly claims about their products with evidence to stamp out misleading green labels in order to greenwash their image. The proposed European Union rules would regulate labels such as natural, climate neutral or having recycled content companies must carry out a science-based assessment, assessing all significant environmental impacts to prove that its products live up to their claims. The proposal would of course cover all consumer products sold in the EU. A drone video from California and the United States has captured cars underwater. The aftermath of the latest spate of harsh wintry weather in the region areas in southern and central California as well as towns along the Pacific coast south of San Francisco were hit by severe floods. The high wind warnings and also advisories have been posted for a vast stretch of California. The storm is the result of an immense airborne current of dense water vapor that was carried aloft from the ocean and then funneled overland in bouts of heavy rain and snow. And Beijing's citizens witnessed a thick blanket of dust covering roads and shrouding buildings due to sandstorms which severely have affected visibility. A yellow sandstorm warning was also issued after pollution after pollution levels to drastically were said to have risen because of the sand and dust storms over the past several days. The air quality index was at 500 which is considered to be very hazardous to human health. Now, Beijing faces regular sandstorms during the months of March and April because of its proximity to the third largest desert in the world, which is the Gobi Desert, and also because of deforestation forestation that has been carried out in the northern part of China extensively. A United Nations report has warned that water shortage is a growing problem worldwide due to vampiric overconsumption and overdevelopment. The report was published just hours before the United Nations Water Conference begins on Wednesday. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said that the world is blindly travelling on a dangerous path as unsustainable water use and unchecked global warming are draining humanity's lifeblood. Nearly about 6,500 people will participate in the UN Water Conference that is to be held from Wednesday until Friday in New York. But a Balinese NGO has deployed a new light vessel in the Bali waters to fight plastic waste near the Indonesian tourist island. The boat is equipped with a suction tool to collect plastic waste, microplastics and also liquid pollutants. The aim is to collect up to about 1,000 tonnes of plastic per year. However, estimates suggest that around 33,000 tonnes of plastic passes through Bali's rivers each year. And studies also show that more than 80% of plastic pollution at the sea comes from land via rivers. This phenomenon is particularly worrying in the southeastern part of Asia due to a lack of adequate collection and treatment of waste. Now, the Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum saw a musical performance of the musical called North Bank of Shushav River. The musical, in fact, tells a love story between a Jewish girl and an underground party member in Hong Kong district. Now, the cafe run by the girl and her father also became the place where the underground party members met. Chen Jian, the curator of the Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum, has said that they want to introduce China to the world through various art forms. The curator has further added that the aim is to show the audiences that this period of history can be depicted, can be depicted in different ways. So on the occasion of World Water Day, Pope Francis has appealed against the waste of water. He's also prayed for the success of the United Nations 2023 Water Conference to be held in New York. 
Latin America's first Pope has made the protection of environment a key plank of his pontificate. Since becoming Pope in 2013, he has repeatedly urged governments to take some drastic measures to combat global warming and also to reduce the use of fossil fuels.